TypeSafe has a range of technologies and tools that help build reactive applications. But what makes the TypeSafe platform itself reactive? These days, applications need to be built to be most efficient as possible in leveraging all of the cores that are available on the platforms that we're going to run on. Today's applications scale to use additional cores, they have to leverage multiple machines, and if you're using technologies that have shared mutable state and contention over that state, threads of execution vying to update that information are going to be blocking and blocking each other, contending for the right to be the person that is able to do that work at that particular time. And that is a real killer for performance. It leads to blocking applications and using mutable, uh, mutually exclusive locks, mutexes and semaphores, synchronization. These are, lead to performance degradation. And when you want to be reactive and responsive to users in low latency, this is really detrimental. Every part of the TypeSafe stack supports the reactive paradigm. From the very beginning, when you're using message-driven technologies that are asynchronous and non-blocking, through elasticity, where you're scaling up and down based upon the current number of requests that your application is handling, through resilience, that is coordinated fault tolerance, handling threads that fail, handling machines that fail, handling data centers that fail, all the way through a responsive experience through, for your customers, clients, and users. Why does this matter? It matters for efficiency. There are so many parts of building an application and deploying an application that need to be more efficient to be reactive. The time it takes to develop an application or the physical servers that you're going to run on, the number of data centers you're using, the code base itself, by writing less code, you're being reactive because you don't have to maintain quite as much. Plus, the time it takes to write less code is clearly less. You're being more efficient about the time that you're using, plus you're saving power. This energy savings is a direct cost savings for your organization. So the Java Virtual Machine itself is an incredibly reactive platform. Any language can be built to compile down to bytecode that can run on the JVM. Scala does this, and then libraries like Akka and Play leverage Scala so that they are built using these reactive tools. Scala is a language that has immutable constructs which are very thread safe and concurrency friendly. Plus, Akka gives you the abstractions to manage the various kinds of, of interactions that are going to take place between the libraries and, and components inside of your application. And then Play itself is built on top of Akka so that it leverages these to build an experience that is reactive for your users. So the Scala language. Scala is the basis of reactive. It's scalable and performant, but also concise and type safe. Type safety is critical for building reactive applications because unless you've written the tests that prove in every possible interaction that you know how to handle various kinds of situations, dynamic languages give you no guarantee of correctness. But the conciseness means that you're no longer writing as much code to do basic things. You're eliminating boilerplate. Scala also gives you the toolkit to solve your problem specifically, whether it's functional approaches or object-oriented approaches. These aren't at odds with one another. You can build applications that leverage both of these approaches and paradigms so that you're building reactive applications that are responsive to users. But Scala is also opinionated enough to push your developers to code in the right way by leveraging immutability, whether it's in the classes you're creating or even inside of the collections that you're using. These are tools that will help you avoid shared mutable state. And its power is evidenced by the amazing tools that have been created with Scala. Think of Akka and Play, but then think beyond that. There are tools such as Spark for uh, reactive big data, or Kafka for uh, distributed message queuing. Um, another great tool is Mesos, which is for leveraging all of the machines in an entire data center as if they were one machine. So Akka is the enabler of reactive. Whenever you're building applications in the old paradigm, you're doing so in a way that 
is going to be monolithic and use mutable state and sessions that are live that have to be communicated across servers. But when you follow the approach that is dictated by Akka, you are now building applications that can scale linearly across all of the machines that you have inside of your, your deployment footprint. It's a concurrency abstraction and avoids locking and therefore is very easy to deal with mutable state because you don't think in terms of multiple threads trying to change it at the same time. And it's easy to reason about who can do what. And now it's almost this illusion of single threaded access. So when you're building applications in the traditional sense, you tend to think of failure as though it's a very tactical approach. You have something going off and doing something. And whenever it returns, it gives you a value or it may throw an exception. When those exceptions occur, what are you going to do about them? And how do you coordinate various kinds of failures that can happen in multiple parts of your application at the same time? This is very difficult to think about. But with the supervision model that came from the Erlang world in OTP, you now have coordinated fault tolerance that allows you to dictate whether failure needs to be handled tactically at the level where it occurred or at a higher level because this is something that is going to impact a larger part of the system. Furthermore, you no longer have errors that you don't find out about. With the th typical threading model on the JVM, you have a thread pool and you have a single way of dealing with any kind of failure that, that could occur on that entire thread pool. That's not good enough. We need more fidelity in being able to discern what went wrong on what thread and what we need to do about it. Inside of our thread pool, we have the uncaught exception handler in the traditional approach. Most people don't even know about it, but even if they did know about it, they probably don't know what to do in a way that they can deal with the different kind of failures that can occur just on that thread pool. With Akka, you no longer have to think in these terms. It's just building applications where the failure itself becomes part of your domain. Failure and the exceptions that occur are messages themselves, and you can deal with them just like any other message. Akka has several infrastructure components as part of its core architecture. There are the actors themselves, which are message uh, passing constructs for uh, handling individual interactions between components. But then there are libraries built over these, including Akka IO, which is used for handling data that is going to come across a socket. Then we have libraries such as Akka Persistence, which is whenever you need to build in a journaling of events or commands that are taking place inside of your system. In doing so, you're decoupling the way that you store things that are happening inside of your system from the way they're going to be read later on. Then there's Akka HTTP, which is built upon the Akka IO layer. And Akka HTTP is the evolution of the Spray library, now available for Java and Scala. Akka HTTP gives you a lightweight way to build RESTful applications with actors behind them. And then on top of that, you have reactive streams, which is a way to build the streaming of data and handle it while providing back pressure. Back pressure is critical to being reactive because it's the only way we can communicate when a system is becoming overloaded. Play Framework gives form to the reactive. Yes, it's just a web framework and all developers understand what that means. But it's ideal for building responsive web applications because it's always pushing you toward the idea of building something that is going to be stateless, non-blocking, and asynchronous. It uses its own threading model and doesn't run inside of an existing container so that you know that there's nothing that is going to be holding back your threads or your interactions other than the way you code your application. It supports Java and Scala and is great for building RESTful services and WebSocket applications. Uh, it includes best-in-class developer experience, which for the JVM is new. Ruby on Rails became very popular because it focused on the developer being able to build something fast while at the same time have fun. On the JVM, this has never been thought about. And Play was created specifically to make the developer experience unique and fun. Now, developers can get that quick interaction, build something, and find out whether or not it worked without having to wait and build and take a long time.
The future of play is coming in the next release, and now play will more tightly integrate with the Akka subsystem. Actors will be the fundamental basis, with Akka I.O. and Akka HTP layered underneath, with reactive streams for handling streaming data, and play sitting on top of all of that. Where before Spray was a separate library from play, Akka HTTP will now be a subset of the functionality of available inside of play. TypeSafe also provides a library called Slick, which makes data access more reactive. There has always been an impeded mismatch between objects and the classes we create to represent them in a program. Now, developers shouldn't have to care about how data is organized inside their persistence store. Instead, developers should be able to think of data that comes back from the data store as though it was just collections that were being held in memory. Slick allows them to do that and treat this data just the same way as if it were inside of a set or a list or a map. And now, you have a much cleaner interface between the data layer and the application. Right now, some existing data stores do not have non-blocking drivers, and that does mean that there are going to be blocked threads. This can be painful for your application, because every thread on the JVM has a weight. By definition, the default amount of weight is 512 kilobytes in size. Think about the impact that has on your heap. But for some databases, such as the NoSQL stores like Cassandra and Mongo and uh, Reoc, there are non-blocking drivers. And there are non-blocking drivers for Postgres and MySQL. They just require that you understand how to use them and how to leverage them appropriately. SBT is the tool for building reactive applications. It's by far the most powerful of all of the build tools in the Java ecosystem. Those that understand what that means and are able to leverage it, love it. Builds can now be tested just like the applications themselves, which is a really revolutionary concept. How many people build their build? Developer experience of Play Framework and Activator come from the power of SBT, and that's why it's worth using to build your application as well. Activator is the tool for getting started with the TypeSafe platform. It's the easiest way to do so. There are many templates out there, over hundreds, showing how to do simple and, and complex tasks. It's a superset of the SBT functionality and therefore makes using SBT easier for people getting started. It's also a great learning tool. If you're looking for a way to leverage TypeSafe technologies with legacy platform technologies that you've been using before, you can probably find an activator template out there to help you do so. Or if you're looking to leverage other emerging technologies that will help you solve your problem, chances are somebody has already provided a template to help you show you how to do that. Apache Spark is a new technology that has hit the market like a tidal wave. For years, people have been building Hadoop and MapReduce applications that gave them business intelligence, but not the flexibility to find out what was happening in their application or in their customer base at any given time. These jobs could take hours to complete and they can't be changed on the fly. Spark changes that by caching large data sets in memory. This is a very big deal because without having to go back to disk and crunch numbers, now the data can be crunched in memory as much as possible. And you have data queries that can be run in minutes, not hours. You can run live queries through a read-evaluate print loop based on the Scala REPL. And this gives you the flexibility to get answers quickly. The momentum behind Spark is like something we've never seen before. The only thing close to it is Docker, and that's just a container. It is on everyone's tech radar on how to get more intelligence in their business faster. TypeSafe provides expertise behind Spark, giving your team the assurance that they get the answers they need when they need it. People can find out more about the TypeSafe Reactive platform at TypeSafe.com or info at TypeSafe.com.